Hey there, guys. It is finally one o'clock. If you don't know me, I'm Viv. I'm the founder of Watercolor with Viv, and today I want to show you how to do this sweet little floral wreath. You know, it's getting to be close to uh, Valentine's Day, so I thought it'd be a good project for us. It's in watercolor, and I'm going to show you step by step how I did it so that you can do it, and you can use it as a card. You can use it as, you know, shrink it down and make it into a nice little tag or just whatever you want to use it for. You can even make a larger one and use it for some home decor. It's up to you. So I am very excited. Hey, Carol, I see you joining. I am so happy you're here. Now, I've been doing these in my private Facebook group, but I've decided that I think I need to do it on my business page just so I can reach more people and help more people because what I do is I help aspiring watercolor artists up-level their game a little bit. I get them out of that they don't know what they're doing and get them on the right path so that's my intent and I said well I'm gonna start doing this on my page so here I am and I'm glad that you're here hey Deb I see you now if you're joining me for the first time Deb and Carol following me for years great I love them um, put your name or put where you're from in the comments even if you're watching on the replay because I will go back and read every comment Tell me how your weather is. It is wet and rainy here, and I, I'm not happy. I do not like wet, cold, or rain. So let me know how y'all's weather is. Just put it in the comments. If you have any questions as I go through, I'll stop periodically and look through my comments. I have my phone over there and see if you have anything that I can answer. So let's just go ahead and jump on in. Let me change my camera. All right, so this is what we're going to be painting today. And it's just a sweet little heart wreath. But before we start on that, I'm going to show you how to do each individual flower. And then we'll get to the heart part. The heart part, not the hard part, the heart part. <laughs> okay, so let me see if who else is on here, if I can see in my, in my comments. Um, what I've got here is I've got some sap green, green gold, teal, cobalt teal, and a little bit of Prussian blue. I've got some cadmium orange and some cadmium yellow. Make sure that you can see it. Let me turn my other thing so you can see. So Ohio's weather is cold. Hold on. I see Carol said Ohio's weather is cold. Oh, Debbie. I don't know how I got you on there. Let me get you back off. <laughs> and it's going to get even colder. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I've got the I've told you the cadmium orange, cadmium yellow. I've got Windsor violet, permanent rose, and let me see which color this is. This is um a quinacridone violet. So that's the colors we're going to use. So I'll show you how to do the first one. I'm going to use my number six ultra pointed round and it's a Lowell Cornell. No, they don't sponsor me. So that's not a, that is not any kind of plug there for them. I see Miss Patty is on here. It's cold and rainy in Myrtle Beach. Oh, we used to go to Myrtle Beach all of the time. So let's start Start first with the rose. I'm going to show you how to do this rose. Let me pull it up a little bit so you can see better. So the rose is really simple. These are so simple. There's no, I mean, you just can't even mess them up. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here with my number six pointed round and load up my brush. And then I'm just going to take and do sort of a spiral with the tip of my brush but I'm leaving some spaces, sort of like that um, yin and yang type symbol. If y'all are familiar, the two fish that curve around each other. And then just do a few more little commas. I'm going to call them commas around the outside. Now, I'm rinsing my brush. With, and with clean water, make sure this water is clean. You just... Start making some little scalloped edges right on the edge. You go right into that color that you've just put down and make some scallops. Just like that. Just I call them scallops. They're just little humps. 
and then you let it dry and it'll dry like this. If you want to add more color into the center, you can go into maybe your magenta and just drop it in while it's still wet. We'll make another one. This time we'll make it smaller. And we'll just use the very tip of the brush. You don't have to be scared about doing this. These aren't meant to be realistic, obviously. And then rinse the brush, get clear water, and do the same thing on the outside. Just pull that out with little with little half circles all around and then let it dry and again if you want to add you can add more of the same color to the center while it's still wet just so that the center is defined more and then let it dry so then the next one we have is something like this see I have these here they're really a lot smaller on here I'm making them larger so you can see them a little better so I've got my Windsor Violet. I'm just going to dip in there. I'm adding a little extra water. And all you have to do here is make two, two sort of commas here and here in the opposite directions and let them meet, let their tails meet. And then, and I'm calling this right here the tail. Let their little tails meet in the middle. And then you can fill them in. And then fill it in. Another little comma and then fill it in. If you want to bring a little point out to it, just use the tip of your brush to make it pointed on the tips. You can make them as fat or thin as you want. Just really simple. Simple, simple, simple stuff. You can make them have as many petals as you like. I, this one's just looking like he's got a little deformed, but it's okay. We're still going to love our little deformed flower anyway. There, we fixed him a little bit. He had a hard time blooming. He didn't, He was stuck in his bud. Same exact thing with the yellow or orange. You can do the same exact. And you can put four on there if you want. Four petals instead of five or six. These petals look a little fat right there. So I'm going to fatten this other one up just so that they're not, so it looks a little more uniform. You make another one. And you're just doing two curves, the opposites of each other, and filling in the middle. So let me show you in a in a big way. Like you'll do a curve this way, and then a curve this way, and then fill in the middle. So that's on a larger scale, so you can see better. A curve this way, and then a curve this way, and then fill in the middle. That's how you can make those type petals. Then, if you want to make some um, rose buds, all you have to do is go back into your paint and just do a little dot like that with a point at the top. A little dot with a point at the top. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> If you want to do um, a different kind of a flower, like, um, I want to say it's Liriatus. It's kind of a feathery, feather flower. Then just do the little, the little um, marks like so. And you'll have kind of a feathery flower. Or you can make a flower with dots. Just do stippling. I call it stippling. Just little dots and make a fuzzy flower if you want. Now if you want berries, just do a circle and leave a little highlight so that it looks like a berry. Try to make it as round as you can. Mine aren't looking round today. I don't know what's going on. My berries are all flattened. Poor things. But you get the idea, you just make a circle and leave a little white space for the highlight. Make sure the white space is kind of facing the same direction so that you'll know that the light's coming from that area. Then once they're dry, for instance, I can come into my purple with some, some of this cad orange and it is an opaque color so it will cover up that purple, that Windsor Violet. And you can make little centers and let that dry. Or you can come in with a different color if you want for the centers. And you can make it really 
like so. For the yellow ones, you can do a purple center or that almost looks like a yellow, I mean a yellow, a black-eyed Susan. Where's my brain going? If you want to make a side flower, you know, one that you're viewing from the side, you can just do like so and make it all come to a point. Almost looks like little chicken feet. Make you some little chicken feet. Just like that, let it dry. Then when you come back to do your leaves, I've got my greens here and you can mix up however you want them. Still using my same same paintbrush. I'm going to work on these over here that are dry. For the bud, you can just put the two little sepals on each side or you can put one right up the center too and just pull it so that it looks like the little buds. I'm going to get some green gold and mix it with this sap green and just make some leaves. Same way I did those petals over there. So that's how you do the petals, just the same way, just different colors so that it looks like a petal. And you can add in some blues to give it a little bit of uh, variation if you want. You know, pick up some of this teal. It's really loose. It's There's not a lot of structure to it. And it'll still look really good if you want to uh, make some... What am I going to say? If you want to do some eucalyptus, make your front one and then just do little circles, little oblong, not circles, more like ovals. Just make some little ovals. As you go down, just I've got Prussian blue and a little bit of um, teal. And then you got some eucalyptus. You can make, what you can do is take a little bit of the violet, put it over here, and a little bit of that sap green, and a little bit of the quinacridone violet, and make sort of a dark color, and make twigs for your berries. Like so. All right, so now I think you get kind of the idea. Just practice these before you actually put it on your um, on your little heart. Now we're going to get to the part where you do your heart. I'm trying to make another eucalyptus, but my eucalyptus is looking a little sad right there. And that's okay. It's okay. All right, so that's how to get each one of the different types of flowers that we're going to use and some berries that we're going to use on our little... I want to get you another look, and I'm going to show you the flowers. There are the little roses, the little purple flowers, the little feathery flowers, um, orange flowers. So that's what we've done. And then I've got berries, and then the leaf work. So now we're gonna. I'm going to show you how I did the heart. So what I did, and you can't tell because I've already done it, but I'm going to walk you through it. I had my piece of tracing paper. I folded it in half and what I did was I just drew half of a heart. Then I turned it over and since it's tracing paper I could see that half through the other side and I drew the other half of the heart. Then what I did was I went around it. Where's my pencil? Pretend this is my pencil. I went around it with my graphite pencil to get that graphite on there really well and I flipped it over put it on my paper and then just traced along it and that graphite that I put on there, voila, it came out as my little heart. So that's a good way to get your heart even, just half the paper, draw half of the heart on your piece of paper, turn it around and draw the other half. Another way to do it is like, just cut out a heart shape with your scissors, just cut it out, lay the heart shape down and trace around it. And that way both sides look even. I just did it that way because that's the paper that I had and I wasn't I couldn't find my scissors. So we did it on tracing paper. Sometimes you just got to improvise. 
All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I might get a smaller brush. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush because this heart is kind of small. I'm also, what I'm gonna do is take my kneaded eraser because this is darker than I want it. I don't want it to show through my flowers. So I'm gonna roll my kneaded eraser into like a little tube and I'm just gonna roll it over this heart to pick up any excess graphite. I don't know if you can still see the heart in the camera, but I can still see the heart. But I'm just picking that excess up because that graphite can make it turn kind of gray, the paint look gray, and it all cuts so it can show through the paint, and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna start up here. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a little bit of this permanent rose, and I've switched over to a number two brush because I want these to be smaller since this is a small, I don't want really giant flowers on it. And I'm just gonna start up here and do my little squiggle, my little, I call them uh, my yin and yangs, my two little commas. Then I'll make a few more commas, offsetting them going around. Just going around the center part. I'm gonna wet, clean my brush and then I'm gonna get clear water. And make sure your water's clean on this one. It has to be clean or you're gonna have a hot mess if you have dirty water and you try to do this because it's going to change the color. And then you just make your little half circles. You let that dry. I'm going to make some little buds. I'm going to make my buds a little darker. I'm just going to go ahead and make some little rose buds coming out from it. And let that dry. I'm going to do a darker, use this darker tone. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to do a little bit smaller rose. Just with the, and I'm using fa the very tip of this because I want it to be small. Making my little commas. And then I'm making some more, just going around, alternating. I'm calling these commas half circles. I'm gonna rinse my brush and I like to dry it off and then come in and get the clean water. And I think I got too much water, so I'm going to just dab a little bit. And then just make the little half circles coming around, like so. Make sure you touch it, you know, touch the paint so that this paint will flow in there. And again, if you want to make the center darker while it's still wet, you can drop a little bit more of that same color in there or a darker color. And I think I'm going to make another one of these little roses here. And this one I'm going to make really small. Should I... I think I'm going to try to see if I can pull the camera in just a little bit. Let's see if I can. Let's see, will it zoom in some? Well, it might not. Let me see. Here we go. Now, let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit. That might help y'all see it just a little bit better. And I'll go ahead and move these over so you can see what I'm doing. With those so I'm gonna come back oh now I got everything shaking like a doggone earthquake running around here I'll make another one right here I started it but then I quit and it dried so fast and that one I just accidentally touched this touched them together but that's okay this is a loose technique and it's really hard to mess up So I got a little clump of roses. I'm taking my clear water and just making little tiny half circles, making sure I touch the paint so that the paint will flow into that water. And then we're gonna let that dry and I'm gonna put some lighter pink, some lighter pink little buds here, just cause I want them. And that's with the rose. Then I'm going to come up, come and make some purple flowers with the same brush. I'm going to add a little bit more water in there. It's a little bit too dark for what I want. So I'm lightening it up by using more water, making it kind of a skim, skim milk consistency. And then I'm just going to put some flowers. Again, I'm drawing commas opposite each other, little curves opposite each other and filling in the center. And you can make as many 
little petals on there as you want. And do another one right beside of it. The bad part about this really tiny brush is I have to keep picking up pigment and water because it doesn't hold that much. It's a synthetic blend, so it doesn't really hold a lot of pigment and water. So I do have to keep loading my brush up. That is one drawback to these kinds of brushes. Plus, it's a really small brush, so it's not going to hold any to begin a lot to begin with. And I'm just doing my little half commas and filling in the center, going around. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and do get some of this orange and I'm just going to do some dots, some circles, just for interest around these um, purple flowers. And then I think I'm going to go back to my bigger brush. Wait, no, this brush, my number six. And I'm going to come into my cadmium yellow. I'm going to have to thin that out some. It's a little thick, so I want it to be more like, um, I want it to be a little bit more like milk. And then I'm going to make let's just little fat flowers with just four petals here. And I'm grouping them. I like to group them in groups of three. Do either groups of one, two, three, or five. And I'm sticking to groups of three just for ease. And you want to keep following your heart line. And I might even do like a, a flower that's from the side so I'm gonna put my little chicken foot up there with a little three-toed chicken foot and put another one just three toes it's just three little toes I'm gonna put that one there then I think I'm gonna do another rose but I'm only gonna do one rose and I'm gonna do it with the nice pink and I'm doing it with my larger brush because it's gonna be one rose and I want it larger so I'm doing my little yin and yang here and then I'm just going to come around again, rinse off my brush, make sure I get all the color out of it and get my clean water and just do my half little circles. And I'm just going to do one here and maybe a little bud out off to the side and one here. We're going to come back in and fill that in with foliage with the green foliage but i'm trying to get enough so that we are it'll dry and then i can start with the foliage we're not going to do the whole entire heart that'd take all day we you know we ain't got that kind of time so i'm gonna move i, I want to do a feathery flower so i'm actually just going to turn my paper around come back into this lavender and i'm just going to do a feathery flower out and it's just lines. It's really basically you draw one in the center and then you just go down each side creating some more lines. And then when we come back we'll do um, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do two more. The foliage will bring it all together. It'll pull it all together once we put the little leaves in there. And if you want to, while it's still wet, you can... Ooh, it dried quick. It's not even still wet. You can add a little darker here and there if you want to. Just to give some interest. And I think I'm going to make um, a few more lavender flowers. No, no, no. We Let's go with some orange flowers. And these I want to be pretty fat and pretty small. So 
So I'm doing my commas farther apart like that, my little curved marks, and then filling in the center to make them a little bit fatter. So you just pull your, your two curved marks further apart and fill in the center. That makes them fatter. Curve, curve, fill in the center. Curve, curve, fill in the center. Curve, curve, fill in the center. Now I'm going to start with some of my foliage on here to show you how to fill it in. Let's see. Let me stop for a second. Let some of this dry. See if there's any questions. Does anybody have any questions? It's really a fairly simple process, so it's nothing really too hard. I'm, it's still a little wet, but I'm going to start up here. And I think I want to make a, a nice bright green with this yellow this green gold, I call it yellow, it's green gold is the actual name. So we're going to use that with a little bit of the sap green to make a nice fresh green for my rose foliage. And I'm just going to do the two little sepals and I'm really just making marks that are pointed at the end and fat in the middle. And then I might get my larger brush. Let's see, yeah. Get my larger brush with that same mixture. Maybe pick up a little bit of the teal with it and start making some little leaves around my roses. Some of the foliage. If you want to make some a little darker, just pick up some of your darker green and go right in there and the, and you you're going to want to vary the colors of your green as you go around so I'm going to get some of the uh, sap green and the Prussian blue and do a little bit of leaves start to mix around in there because you want to mix them up, mix up the colors, come in between the little flowers. You can pick up a little bit more of the blue and put that in there. And as you see, it's not anything complicated. It's really just little marks. I'm going to come in these um, purple flowers and let them have a cadmium orange center. And since cadmium orange is pretty opaque, it will go right over that and make a nice bright cadmium orange center. I'm going to come back into this mixture that we mixed the green, the red, and the blue and make some little centers for my yellow flowers. I'm also going to put some petals on these buds, these rose buds right here. Let's see. I want a darker, the darker green for these around these yellow flowers just for the contrast. So I'm putting a little bit more of the darker green and I'm picking up a little bit more of the Prussian blue. I'm coming back to my brighter mixture for the rose petals. And you can vary the size of your leaves, of course. Oh, I forgot. These are naked. I left my little buds right here naked, so we need to put a little a little um, sepal thing, a little bud cap on them. 
at the bottom so they're not naked. We can't be having no naked flowers. All right, and we just keep working our way around. Now, if you want to start adding some berries, you can come in here to your quinacridin magenta and draw a little cluster of berries. I call it draw, paint. Paint a little cluster of berries, but it is like you're using your brush as a, as a pencil. You've choking up on it, and you're really low down close to the... close to the um, brush, the actual tip of the brush, the tuft, and you can do a little, I'm, I'm going to pull mine down so it'll be like the point of my, the tip of my little heart, so it'll come down into a nice little tip. And if I feel like the white is a little bit too, the little white highlight, I'll just fill it in closer because we don't want that to be too, too big. I'm going to take some violet and really thick like um, cream mixture and put it right in the center of these little orange flowers. And I'm also going to just draw some lines in these feathery flowers with that thick cream violet just to give it some more, a little bit more, um, Definition, that's the word I'm looking for. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying Look at, I'm going to put Miss Carol up here. Oh, nope, can't do it. It's not working. Well, now I can't get it off. There we go. <laughs> there, no question. There, I got her now. No question. She's just enjoying the lesson. Thank you, Miss Carol. Now I don't know how to get her back off. She might have to stay up there. I'm just, I'm just clicking on it. It's not coming back off. I ain't gonna worry about it. Carol, you just gonna stay up there talking about the weather. That's all. Okay, back to reality now. And and we'll just continue to just do different blends of colors for the leaves and fill in some of the spaces and then if we want that dark dark color we can make this dark color for our berries and just do little berry stems using the tip of our brush we can even do like some little tiny leaves if we want to And then we can start with some roses again. On this side, we're going back up. Going back up the other side now. Clear water. Doing a little, a little dilly-dally. A little half dilly-dally. Just like so. That's a technical watercolor term, y'all. I'm going to come back in and put a little bit more color right in the center. So I'm just picking it up and dropping it in. And letting it go where it may. And I'm going to make another one. A little bit smaller here clean water my little half circles that I've been calling dilly dollars dilly something and I'll put another one right here it's gonna be really small uh oh Grabbing my, I gotta do something about that camera cord. And don't be scared, just go right around the edge, the edge of the flower. Don't be scared about it bleeding. We want it to bleed a little bit. And if I wanna just do some green dots, I can do some green dots around this just to add some interest. Just use your imagination. 
just test different things. Do a little leaf here, a little leaf here if I want to. Do some leaves over here. So it's really easy. It's just, it's really a loose technique. And then you'll just keep doing this same technique. Do your flowers, let them dry, come back with the with the foliage, vary your colors of your leaves, vary the colors of your flowers, and then when you finish getting all the way around, you will have a cute little valentine or floral, not valentine, what am I trying to say? A cute little floral wreath, but it's ready for Valentine's Day. You can write love in the center. I'm not a good person to do that I'm not I have terrible handwriting you can use it as wall decor home decor you can shrink it down on your printer and turn it into um turn it into little tags gift tags there's just so much stuff you could do with this so there you have it well let me put this here so so there you have that now let's see let me get back to my other camera So did any, let me turn this around so you don't have to look at my ugly door. <laughs> so that no questions then, let me put my glasses on. Y'all look, I had to tape my glasses up because the dog bit them and broke them. So yeah, I'm walking around with tape on my glasses. I don't care. <laughs> so no questions. Y'all enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Thank y'all for coming. Um, I'm going to try to come next Friday and do another live. And we're going to try to make this a habit. Of every Friday to come on here on the Facebook page and do a little lesson something easy that you can do on your own by yourself once you see it I'm gonna leave this in the group or it's not a group on the page so you can refer back to it if you need to so y'all stay warm stay dry and I will catch y'all next Friday bye oh my glasses okay